Good evening, everyone. My name is Alexander, and I would like to welcome all of our distinguished guests. Yang Berbahagia Dato Lloyd Teknan, Group Executive Chairman, Taylor's Education Group. Mrs. Abby Loy, Group Executive Director, Taylor's Education Group. Yang Berbahagia Tan Sui Dato Haji Ali Mudin, Chairman, Board of Governors. Mr. B.K. Gan, President of Taylor Schools. Mr. Mark Tan, Chief Operating Officer, Taylor Schools. Esteemed parents, respected teachers, and my dear friends to the Year 13 Graduation Awards Ceremony. Today marks a cause for celebration. Almost two years ago on this day, we started the perilous journey into what I could only describe as the most dynamic, stressful, and yet rewarding 24 months of our life so far. It is no surprise that coming to our third consecutive year of COVID that the lockdown has taken a strain on all of us, students, staff, and parents alike. I can imagine a wave of relief passing over my classmates right now, followed by the uncertainty of not knowing what is to come next. GIS has been a safe haven for us, and thus it's the site of many fond memories. From all the times the boys jammed the pool table to the Christmas potluck where we filled in the quiz of a literal dice roll, or even those times in Interhouse where you'd have to dodge a subsonic speed dodgeball from Yan Heng and company. We bonded together like a close-knit family. Granted, some of us has probably caused so much mayhem that we've aged Miss Golding into gray hair territory, but we're a family nonetheless. Miss Golding, along with all of our wonderful tutors and HE advisors, have been here for us, supporting us every step of the way as both mentors we respect and as friends we can banter with. So you can see why stepping back out into the unknown is a rather daunting task, but hey, a bird's gotta leave the nest at some point, right? To say that we have big dreams is an understatement. Everywhere I turn, I can see world-class musicians, lawyers, programmers, athletes, doctors, entrepreneurs, modelers, photographers, and everything in between. I can see a cohort of students hungry to push the boundaries of what we once thought was impossible, to break new records and to make a mark on history's ever-weaving tapestry. And yet, here we are, sitting on our butts, talking through a computer screen, because a 20 nanometer size ball of RNA brought our whole world crashing down upon us. Any sane person would say changing the world right now is impossible. Thank God we don't listen. <laughs> Frankly speaking, the only thing that's kept us from going completely insane is our support system. From our dedicated and loving parents who have nurtured us before we could say their names, to the wonderful subject teachers who keep us going even when we feel inadequate for the task. To the janitors and the security guards who keep the school spick and span. To the canteen staff who satisfy our craving for chicken katsu curry. We are so blessed to be supported by such a selfless group of individuals, truly, we stand on the shoulders of giants. I suppose the point I'm trying to make is that we've been given an opportunity, a real chance to make a difference in this world. Our generation knows probably more than any other that's come before it, the extent of the damage that we do to our planet and the damage that we do to each other. From the injustices that plague our modern society, even to issues as basic as having access to clean water and food, there's no shortage of crises on this blue rock we call home. It's easy to grow apathetic and to dull yourself to the sounds of the world, but making a change always starts with a small step. It has been an honor to serve and study at this school over the eight years of my time here. Whether you've been with us for the last two years or from the very beginning, it has been a pleasure riding this journey alongside you. As we all go our separate ways, I hope that one day we'll be able to meet again, to reconnect, and build our friendships in new places and stages of life. But most importantly of all, I wish for everyone to maintain that spirit of excellence and passion and to let it burn bright wherever you may go next. Because if just a single spark can light a flame in the darkness, then we are a bonfire upon the world. I would now like to invite Miss Ward, our head of secondary, to say a few words. Thank you. Good evening, parents, guests, teachers, the Board of Governors, 
and most importantly, the graduating class of 2021. The graduation event is a time of great celebration. And this year I feel this is all the more deserved perhaps than any year that has come before. The year group graduating from GIS this year are no doubt an astounding group of individuals. Academically strong and focused, but as importantly, compassionate, self-aware, kind and gracious. Our GIS historical record of excellence in academic achievement and progression onto the world's top universities is something that we will see again in this year's cohort. None of that happens by accident. The hard work, perseverance, dedication and can-do attitude seen by students, staff and parents working together is a key ingredient to this success. And this will be celebrated again this year. In addition to this, however, this year's graduating students have learned lessons in life that many graduating students before did not even have to consider. During your time in sixth form, you have learned about how to deal with uncertainty, how the best laid plans can unfold right in front of your eyes, and how when you think you know what's just around the corner, it's never quite exactly as expected when you get there. There's a resilience and a determination and a great amount of humility that I've seen from this year group. There are, I'm sure, none of you watching this tonight who have not experienced a roller coaster of emotions, especially during the last two years. And if you think it's been plain sailing, then just turn to your parents sitting next to you, because if you haven't felt it, I'd be certain and confident in that, thinking that they have. In life, there are some things that we can control and there are some things that are out of our control. A great number of things often out of our control. But it's what we do with the things in our control that shape our futures and influence those people around us. Recently, as I was out hiking, and one of the times we were able to, in the jungle with my two and my four-year-old, I was watching my two-year-old son tearing ahead 10 minutes into a six-kilometer trek. I started recounting to them the story of the hare and the tortoise, the famous Aesop's fable. The hare is boasting about his speed in front of all the other animals and challenges any one of them to take a race. The tortoise accepts the challenge. At first, the hare thinks it's a joke, but the tortoise is being serious. So soon after the race begins, the hare runs full speed ahead to make fun of the tortoise. He then decides to humiliate him more, he'll take a nap. The tortoise keeps going slowly and slowly, and the hare wakes up eventually and notices that the tortoise is near the finishing post and fails to win the race. About two hours later, when I was nearing my house, probably about 500 meters from my house, I was carrying my fast asleep two-year-old on my shoulder and thinking about this story again. The moral of the story, slow and steady does sometimes win the race. Sometimes in life, it might look like other people are racing ahead and you never know, however, what obstacles are going to step, stop them in their tracks. Never let anybody tell you that you can't do something. And don't watch those hairs around you and let them make you feel like it's not even worth trying. Finishing our A-levels is a significant point in your life. For many of you, you will look back at this time with great fondness. For some of you, there have been challenges that you'd rather forget in, especially I imagine the last couple of years. Some of you will cringe at the things that you said or did, or even the things that you wore during this time. And while this is a significant point in your life, it is just that. It's a point in your life, a moment in your journey. From here, the world is literally your oyster. At GIS, our mission is to be global leaders in creating, building, sorry, brave, brilliant and inquisitive young people who are committed to the positive growth of themselves and others. When I look at your year group and I watch you learn and grow, especially over the last few years, I'm confident that we have achieved this mission. Today is not a goodbye, but instead both a good luck and a welcome as you transition into the next phase at GIS as part of our alumni community. I look forward to seeing and hearing from all of you in the future and supporting you in both the good times and the challenges that may lie ahead. Thank your parents for being a key part of your success today and enjoy the rest of your graduation evening. For each subject, we present an Academic Achievement Award to the student who has excelled in all areas of the subject. 
This is in regards to the marks, the participation, the excellent attitude and the great work habits. For biology, Vicky Kang. Chemistry, Han Ying Chu. For physics, Vicky Kang. For literature, Shreya Naya. For business studies, Alexander Lim. For economics, Isabel Lee. For computer science, Kai Shen Tan. For maths, Amira Bukhari. For further maths, Brandon Chin. For art, Maya Gan. For photography, Arshi Jian. For geography, Abby De Silva. For history, Isabel Lee. For sociology, Aisha Suhani. For psychology, Shreya Nair. For Spanish, Benaya Benwani. For French, Daniel Adam. For PE, Carlotta Cicerelli. And for extended project, Benaya Benwani. We'll now move on to a second set of subject awards. These are awarded to the students who have shown a real zest for learning through a combination of passion for the subject, consistent approach and effort in class, and a real determination to learn and to succeed. For biology, Alicia Lau Shawandas. For chemistry, Tisha Kumar. For physics, Lila Dean. For English literature, Maya Duckett. For economics, Katia Fung. For maths, Carlotta Cicerelli. For further maths, Hafiz Charul Nasri. For sociology, Julia Jesney. For business, Maya Jameson. For computer science, Gregory Chan. For art and design, Antonia McDonnell. For photography, Maya Jameson. For geography, Aisha Suhami. For history, Harina Gupta. For Spanish, Edwin Lawrence. For product design, Jeremy Thompson. For psychology, Alicia Lau Shawendas. And for projects, Darlene Suruwinata. Lee Chloe. Together with her, we welcome her two core performer, Ng Xingyi and Bernadine. The title of her composition is the mighty sea. She composed this piece based on her unforgettable experience during a cruise ship journey. Let's enjoy.
Students, parents and teachers, thank you for joining us in the live streaming of graduation. I know we all wish that we could be together tonight, but we hope this ceremony allows you to reflect on the Year 13 students' time with us and to celebrate their successes. Year 13, we are so proud of you. You have worked hard throughout your time in school, shown determination and commitment, and we are excited to see what you go on to do next. Any graduation ceremony throws up a mix of feelings for me, and this situation and what you've experienced during your time in the sixth form amplifies those feelings further. I'm pleased and proud to see the successes that you've achieved throughout your time with us, although I'm sad to see you leave our school, and even more so because of the fact that your time in the sixth form, this crucial rite of passage, has not been the experience that you would have been expecting or been looking forward to. Undoubtedly, your teachers have gone above and beyond to help you stay on track during this transformative phase in your lives. But there is no denying that you've had it tougher with so much more uncertainty than those in years before you. But what have you gained? You have overcome the same obstacles of sixth form life, whilst also managing the ever-changing landscape so you can graduate and transition from our school we believe that with the adaptability that you would have certainly developed during the past two years, you are arguably better prepared than any of your predecessors to take a successful step into university and life beyond. Being adaptable is really how well a person reacts to the inevitability of change. Reportedly, this can be more important than IQ and EQ. As the rate of technological change continues to accelerate, and even the nature of family and personal relationships becomes ever more diverse. This ability to adapt becomes ever more crucial. I know that some of you have experienced a real sense of loss during the past year and of missed opportunities. I can certainly empathize. I have not had the opportunity to get to know as many of you as I would have liked to have done this year. Normally the sick form center is a hive of activity and usually between your lessons, at break, lunch times, whilst you're enjoying a chat with each other, teachers and myself would have had lots of opportunities for informal chats and discussions with you. As insignificant and small as they might seem to be, I personally find that there is nothing bigger in helping us to connect and get to know the real you. I have been fortunate enough to teach a select group of you chemistry over the years and in MedSoc. If those individuals are representative of the year group, then I know I've really missed out. What I have seen though, is a resilient group of students that have made the most of opportunities afforded to them and have actively sought out their own. For example, Vinaya, Carlotta, Zuaria, publishing their own medical blog under the microscope. Isabel's new college humanities economics essay shortlisted from 5,000 entries worldwide. Katia's plugging group for the Monkiara community. This has even inspired my six-year-old daughter to frequent the Kiaramas Hill armed with her own trash grabber. Equally, Tisha's Global Citizen award-winning book has helped educate my daughter about the experiences of young Rohingya refugees. It is not an over-exaggeration to say that you are already making a difference in the world around you. More widely, I was astounded by the efforts that your year group amassed last year after the announcement that exams would be cancelled. In other countries and schools in which my friends work, I heard stories of empty Zoom calls and students that had just switched off. That has certainly not been the case with you. In fact, as a year group, your online attendance record was one of the best in the school. Making the most of opportunities is an attribute that typifies the most successful GIS students. And you can certainly be proud of the fact that so many of you hold university offers in your first choice institutions. For this, we must also say a huge thank you to Mr. Wickham, Ms. Morrison, and your tutors and teachers. They have clearly worked tirelessly to support you in realizing your aspirations and putting forth such compelling university applications. I would also like to offer a huge thank you to Miss Golding for her leadership of the tutor team 
and through them, all of the year group. The inevitable successes that you will go on to realize in years to come can also in part be attributed to their dedication and support. Tonight we are celebrating you reaching the end of your A-levels, but that has only been one small part of your experience here. Your preparation for life has come from the skills that you've developed and the opportunities outside of your subjects, just as much as studying for your A-levels. Additionally, it is the community that you have built here that we hope you take away from GIS and keep with you later in life, just as much as the certificates that you will receive. One of my favorite things about GIS, and certainly a pool that will see me move into my 10th year here in August, is the fact that so many of you come back and tell us about your adventures after graduation. The education you have received here at GIS is your passport to the future. The journey that you now decide to embark upon is down to you to choose, and I encourage you to be adventurous in your exploration. Take risks, move yourselves out of your comfort zone, as that's where rich personal learning so often takes place. I really believe that sometimes you find out what you're supposed to be doing by doing the things that you're not supposed to do. A huge thank you must also go to your families and the support that they have given you to get to this point. I hope that you can all take some time with them over the next few weeks to enjoy being together before you take that next step away and move to university. There will soon come a time that you are missing home-cooked food, clean clothes that magically appear in your cupboards, and more importantly, proximity to your loved ones. I would also like to thank families for the support that they have given to the school. Remember that as a GIS alumni, you will always be part of this school. Whilst you might all be very different as individuals, you will always have a commonality in that you have roots here. If you need us, you know where we are. Families, teachers and guests, I hope you have a fantastic evening celebrating the successes of our year 13 students. We will now commence the graduation presentation. Ha Yung Chong, Nixon Chung, Layla D, Julia Jesme, Haven Kang, Alicia Lau Shoandas. Lian Yuli Li Guillaume Mail Antonia McDonald Harry Nair Darlin Suryawinata Hiran Turason Yan Hern Yang, Jeff Chang, Zitao Chen, Kinga Dabrowska, Jun Ida, Ashi J. Tommy Ko, Edwin Lawrence, Alexander Lim, Kexin Lim, Shona Moraes, Nikita Nightingale. Utkash Rana Jessica Tan Hafiz Chairam Nazri Dylan Goon Isabel Lee Katanjali Hobelin 
Aisha Suhaimi. Kaishen Tan. Neil Tirathrai. Jeremy Thompson. Orion Walenka. Zee. Daniel Adam Amira Bukhari Gregory Chan Mingshan Chun Katia Fung Ryan Keller Chloe Lee Ho Yang Lim Janhavi Hawkar Natalia Shaharul Reza Jasmine Sheikh Ishmael Hisio Shin Kenji Wong Thomas Allen Cockerell Benaya Binwani Carlotta Ketcherelli Maya Duckett Alyssa Fung Andrew Limpitlaw Lubna Mohammed Zahiruddin Mariam Najam Arush Ravindra Maya Harris Tonku Hamam Joshua Wong Brandon Chin Kishan Chitra Karen Elliot Cook 
Sione Das Navjot Gill Hannah Hamad Maya Jameson Ahana Nigam Zawaria Sharin Keshab Siva Vera the Kedkar Gillian Wong Kenneth Wong Ariana Binder Hanying Chu Karina Gupta Rashi Koka Tisha Kumar Jane Lowe Shreya Nair Lucas Neukäufer Jeng Ian Ong Ashe Raj Partiv Rao Congratulations to all of the students. I would now like to introduce a short message from our guest speaker, YB Dr. On Kyang Min, Member of Parliament for P102 Bangi. Dr. Ong Kyang Ming is the former Deputy Minister of International Trade and Industry, otherwise known as MITI. And he is the current Member of Parliament for Bangi, the constituency with the largest number of voters in Malaysia. He holds a PhD in Political Science from Duke University, an MPhil in Economics from the University of Cambridge, and a BSc in Economics from the London School of Economics. Prior to joining full-time politics, he has had experience as a university lecturer, a public policy researcher, and a management consultant. He enjoys jogging, playing the PlayStation 4, and chess, and he also enjoys listening to podcasts in his spare time. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm in the stars tonight. So watch me bring the fire and set the night alight. Shining through the city with a little funk and soul. So I'm going to light it up like dynamite. Ooh. Hi, guys. Uh, graduating class of Garden International School 2021. Uh, my name is Dr. Ong Kian Ming, Member of Parliament for Bangi and a member of parliament since 2013. Uh, if in case you guys are wondering, that was my poorly executed version of BTS's hit song called Dynamite. For the parents who are watching, if you don't know who or what BTS is, please Google BTS James Corden Kapu Karaoke. I'm sure you enjoy it as much as I did. Now, some of you may be wondering why I started out this speech with a BTS song. Those of you who are part of ARMY would of course know that RM, the leader of BTS, basically learned his English by watching old episodes of Friends, the classic NBC sitcom that first appeared on television way back in 1994, when I think all of you were not born yet, of course not referring to the parents. Uh, and uh, I think it's because of this story of RM, uh, which has made friends reappear uh, in the eyes and minds of the younger generation. And of course, Netflix and the lockdowns which have happening in Malaysia and all over the world for the past one and a half years is probably a cause of this as well. I'm talking about uh, friends making a comeback. This is what I hear from a few of my favorite podcasts including Pop Culture Happy Hour on National Public Radio or NPR. Of course, the parents who are listening into this, who are watching this, would most probably be very familiar with Friends, having grown up watching Rachel, Monica, Smelly Cat Phoebe, Ross, Chandler, 
and of course, Joey on television. So why am I bringing up a sitcom that is close to 30 years old during a graduation ceremony to you guys? Well, I wanted to let you guys know that no matter which university you may choose to go to, or what career path you may choose to take, or who you choose to marry, or not to marry, as the case may be, the one thing, other than your family, which you will take with you for a lifetime, are your high school friends. Yes, that's right, your high school friends. Your high school friends are the people you have gotten to know at an age of relative innocence. When the road ahead is an open canvas, when the price of making mistakes is not that high, and when you're unburdened yet by the pressures and stresses of having your own family and trying to map out your career path. These are the people whom you've laughed and cried with, whom you fought with, whom you studied with, whom I'm sure you've argued with and debated with, and whom you've played basketball with, or perhaps played games on PlayStation or the PC. Sure, you may not like some of your friends, and perhaps some of them may not like you in return. That's fine. That's part and parcel of growing up. But there will be a group of friends, a handful, whom you call your BFFs, or best friends forever. Your BFFs will probably end up going to different universities in different countries or cities. Although you promise that you will keep in touch, even with the help of technology and communication devices, you will probably drift apart over time. That's natural. You will have your own careers and your own families to care for and worry about. But during strange and challenging times, when one of you is down and out and really needs a helping hand, don't be surprised if it is one of your high school friends who reaches out from unexpected places. When your son and daughter later on in life needs a recommendation to get an internship or an interview, don't be surprised if it is one of your high school friends whom you will contact. If you, for whatever reason, need to bring your parents to a hospital for consultation, don't be surprised if the consulting doctor is your classmate from high school. This has certainly been the case for me. The high school friends I made, whether in Lhasa Pataling Jaya, here in Malaysia, or in Raffles Institution in Singapore, are the people I still keep in touch with. Among my friends from Lhasa PJ, we see each other on the road, literally, as some of us are going through a midlife crisis and want to get back into shape by jogging or taking part in marathons and triathlons. Among my male friends from Raffles Institution, we still gather to play poker online and to trash talk over Google meetings. Among the ASEAN scholar community, which I belong to, we exchange notes about COVID-19 vaccinations for our parents and whether or not to sign up for the AstraZeneca voluntary option for them. The world, as you know, is experiencing something unprecedented in our lifetimes during this COVID-19 pandemic. The world has been turned upside down in many ways that many people, including yourselves, could not have imagined just one and a half years ago. For you guys, the last one and a half years of going to school physically and then having to go to school online and then back to physical school again and then back to online lessons must have been very disruptive. Not just for you, but for your teachers and your parents as well. But I'm sure during these challenging times, you found ways to encourage one another, to make each other laugh, to share tips about how to be more interactive in your online classes, which your teachers have worked hard to make more interesting and relevant. I'm sure you guys still gather online to talk about which boys are cute and which girls are attractive, and to complain about some of your teachers and also your parents in a loving way, of course. I don't want to use this time to give you an inspiring speech, quote unquote, about what you can or will do after leaving Garden International School and going to university and then on to the working world. I'm sure all of you just do, will do just fine. Rather, I want to give you a gentle reminder 
to remember all those good and bad experiences which you've had at GIS with your teachers and with your friends. These experiences will mold you into the person that you will become. And your friends will be with you and you will be with them along the way in the journey of life. Sometimes close by and sometimes a little further away, but never out of reach, especially during times when you need a shoulder to cry on or when you need a person to laugh or drink with. In related news, I just watched the Friends reunion show, which dropped last month, and I must say it was pitched exactly right. If you haven't watched it already, please watch it with your parents, if you're brave enough, or perhaps more suitably with your friends. Finally, I want to leave you with words from part of a poem by the late great American poet, Maya Angelou, entitled Alone, which talks about friendships. Alone, all alone. Nobody, but nobody can make it out here alone. Now, if you listen closely, I'll tell you what I know. Storm clouds are gathering. The wind is going to blow. The race of man is suffering. And I can hear the moan. Because nobody, but nobody, can make it out here alone. I say, alone, all alone. Nobody, but nobody, can make it out here alone. Once again, thank you for inviting me to share some of my thoughts with you guys. All the best for the rest of your career, for the rest of your lives. Keep safe. And congratulations to the Garden International School for celebrating 70 wonderful years. Keep safe. And remember your friends always. Bye-bye. Hello. The Dragon Shield is awarded to a student who has made a significant contribution to the sporting life of the school. The recipient of this award is selected by the PE department. Although we have had an unprecedented 18 months for sport, there is one person whose contributions have been outstanding, starting from the primary school and going all the way through to the final Ames competition of last year. This year, the Dragon Shield winner is Carlotta Ceccarelli. Unfortunately, I have not had the pleasure to coach Carlotta directly. I could never get her to play basketball. However, to describe Carlotta's attitudes and abilities, I will relay the words of three of her coaches. Mr. Phillips. Carlotta always makes training fun with her phenomenal attitude. She has shown great development over the last three years, culminating with her finest performance in the last girls football match, outworking and outwitting Alice Smith's best player, who was an age group international, helping the GIS team to a 4-0 win and the Ames Trophy. Coach Dak. It's been my privilege to coach Carlotta over the past four years. I've been impressed with her constant commitment and dedication to her swimming. Carlotta always strives for excellence and to do her best through all the ups and downs of sport brings. She is a credit to herself, the Dragon Swim Team and Garden School. Mr. Bygros, what a sportswoman. Individually excellent and pivotal as a team player. Even when she was younger, her determination, focus, fitness, attitude, leadership qualities, and self-belief were evident so early on. She sets herself high standards in everything she does and more often than not achieves them, which is actually pretty amazing. Thoroughly pleasant off the field with opponents, coaches, and teammates, Carlotta is generally a lovely person. What a well-deserved winner of this award. Congratulations, Carlotta, and we wish you every success in the future. The Taylor's Award goes to a student who has contributed to the school and beyond in the form of community service. This year, the award goes to a student who has managed to maintain an excellent academic record alongside driving forward environmental initiatives. She indefatigably makes her form class, her family and friends, and anyone else who will listen, aware of the world beyond the confines of our school gates and what we can do to fight back against the challenges facing our planet. In an effort to tackle the problem of littering in our own community, she set up a blogging group, The Trash Talkers. 
to deal with the issue of littering head on. Her commitment and desire to educate others about environmental issues has extended far beyond the confines of Malaysia. She has worked on a project in Indonesia to create a documentary for primary students about a wildlife rescue centre, as well as spending a month wading in muddy rivers in Hong Kong to take part on a conservation project about water pollution in ecosystems. Coupling her passion for conservation and environmental issues with her desire to learn, the recipient of this award has also enrolled in numerous courses about sustainable crops and farming. A true inspiration to us all, this year we award the Taylor's Award to Katia Fung. The Head of Year Award acknowledges a student's participation in and organisation of events linked directly to the Year Group. This year, the Head of Year Award goes to a student who has worked tirelessly over the past years to promote cohesion and wellbeing within the Year Team. She has been at the forefront of helping to coordinate activities that have enabled our Year Group to bond and come together. Organising events such as Diwali and Christmas celebrations and Sixth Form Family Meets to name but a few. She was also instrumental in helping to plan our graduation celebration packs, as well as single-handedly planning and coordinating the supply and delivery of the Year 13 hoodies. In general, she is always happy to help and is forever offering her support to the staff and students around her, both in her tutor group and the Year team as a whole. We are very grateful for the care and support she has shown to all her teachers and peers and would like to take this opportunity to thank her for her tremendous work within the year team. This year, the Head of Year Award goes to Vera Vakedkar. The Head of Sixth Form Award acknowledges a student's participation in an organisation of events directly linked to the Sixth Form. This year, the award goes to a student who has given generously of his time to ensure the continued success of our school student leadership programme. Despite a very challenging year, the recipient's belief in student leadership and his unwavering desire to model that leadership is action clearly drove him forward to continually ask, what more can I do for the student body? One of his first duties as head student was to plan and deliver a keynote speech at the Student Leadership Conference, where he spoke about the importance of gratitude. This was a truly memorable speech, with the student drawing on his personal experiences in a way that resonated with our audience and made his message clear and impactful. With core values rooted in gratitude and student wellbeing, he realized the value in the continuation of his predecessor's hashtag I am thankful for project in raising morale and promoting connection during his, this unsettling period. His time in Rob has clearly helped him develop exceptional active listening skills and the ability to ask perceptive and insightful questions. Unassuming in nature, but certainly not afraid to be honest and share his opinions when it's for the betterment of outcomes for his fellow students. This student is the epitome of GIS successfully realising its mission of building brave, brilliant and inquisitive young people who are committed to the positive growth of themselves and others. We award the Head of Sixth Form Award to Alexander Lim. The Head of Secondary Award goes to a student who has shown distinguished contribution and commitment to the school community. This year, we recognise a student who has a lovely approach to everybody around them and who is renowned for their smiling, positive demeanour. This student is acknowledged by her teachers as being incredibly diligent, resilient and showing a sustained contribution to helping others out. Alongside her role as student leader, she's a co-founder of the medicine and healthcare blog Under the Microscope and a former finalist for the Formula One in Schools project. Her other accomplishments include being a peer counsellor, a community sports leader and a science ambassador, as well as a dedicated member of our Reach Out Community Service Programme. 
Her excellent organisation and revision skills have been an inspiration to many of us and her fantastic resources and study schedules have been utilised by many across the year group and beyond. An enthusiastic member of the Sixth Form Committee, the recipient of this award threw herself into all activities and contributed significantly to planning and organising events across the Sixth Form. This year we award the Head of Secondary Award to Zuraya Sharin. The Principal's Award recognises significant contributions made by an individual student across the school. The recipient must be adaptable and committed and serve as a role model to his or her peers. This year, the Principal's Award is presented to a student who has excelled in both her academic studies and her efforts to make a positive difference in our community. Showing initiative and true GIS spirit during the first national lockdown, she created her very own website aimed at connecting people and providing ideas about how to stay motivated and focused at home during these extremely challenging times. Her tireless dedication to help others less fortunate than ourselves can be seen in her work with the Karikchi Literacy Hub where she volunteers to help young children to learn to read and write. It is also seen in her significant contributions to our Reach Out Teaching Maths programme. A dedicated student leader for the Digital Strand and a peer counsellor, she has also supported and enhanced the learning experience of many members of our own GS community, not only in the aforementioned roles, but also in her position as mentor for the KL Coding Dragons. Alongside all of this, her passion for learning not only transpired in excellent academic results, but also in the creation of an academic blog, Staring at the Stars. Staring at the Stars focuses on topics such as technology, photography, and computer science. This year, the Principal's Award goes to Jan Harvey Berka. Congratulations. Year 13 graduation is one of the key dates in the school calendar. And we're all really sorry that we could not be together for a face-to-face -face ceremony. Like last year, unfortunately, circumstances have dictated that we need to carry out a virtual event. But I hope we can make this event as special as possible for you all. Of course, today is about you, year 13 graduates, but let's not forget the very important part played by both parents and staff. John Hattie, one of the world's leading educationalists, once said, parents, schools, and students are partners working together to cultivate a can-do mentality. At GIS, we certainly have that can-do mentality. A big thank you, parents, to the major part that you have played, and congratulations also to you this evening. I hope you're happy with school choice. It is one of the most important decisions that you make as parents. Thank you for choosing GIS and thank you for sticking with GIS. And of course, let's not forget the key part played by our excellent teaching staff. The relationships that they've built and the support that they've given has been beyond the call of duty. And this has continued right through these extraordinary times. But tonight, of course, is about you, year 13 graduates. It's a time for celebration and a time for congratulations. As a year group, you've impressed with student leadership and student voice, a commitment to service, and particularly the refugee community here in Malaysia. You've shown excellence in sport and arts, and pre-COVID, I certainly enjoyed watching a number of your events. As a year group, you are known for academic excellence, but I think what's really impressed us all has been your resilience both individually and collectively during these extremely difficult times. I really hope school has prepared you well for the next steps. Most of you started school back in 2006. And of course, the world was a very different place in 2006. 
The Middle East was a real hotbed. The Allied troops were searching everywhere and eventually found Saddam Hussein. There was a Seijo mine disaster and North Korea became a nuclear state. Believe it or not, it was back in 2006 that Twitter was created. And I know Donald Trump is eternally grateful for that. Al Gore produced the very important movie An Inconvenient Truth, and that brought real attention to the issue of climate change. Pirates in the Caribbean was the biggest grossing movie of the year, and Boulevard of Broken Dreams won the Grammy as the best song. But back in 2006, nobody had an idea of what the world would look like in 2021. Equally, nobody has an idea what the world will look like in another 15 years. But an excellent education, in my opinion, is to prepare students for an ever-changing world, to develop those skills and flexibility to succeed. Education can be an agent of positive change. The great Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon by which we can change the world. Here at GIS, we have a skills-based curriculum which promotes 21st century transferable skills. Research skills, communication skills, self-management skills, social skills, and thinking skills. But we also here develop character attributes such as tolerance, compassion, resilience, honesty, and creativity. As a school, if we've been successful, we will have helped develop both those character attributes and those key 21st century transferable skills. They're a passport for a successful further education, a career, and of course, a personal life. Year 13, as a cohort, there are 87 of you. Four of you started back in nursery, and 14 have been with us since EYC. Within the year group, there are 20 different nationalities, and certainly diversity was one of the greatest strengths here of GIS. We are international and proudly Malaysian. Please take away from GIS the importance of inclusion. Live your life celebrating diversity be a continued part of a better world. We need your example. Remember, graduation is not the end, it's part of a lifelong journey. I feel like I'm qualified to give you some advice in terms of your next step. I, of course, once graduated from school a long time ago, back in 1978. I graduated from a state school in Leeds and the occasion was not particularly stylish. I took a gap year between 1978 and 1979, where I worked, I traveled, and I learned a foreign language. I then, of course, went on to university to study my passion, history. I'm a parent of two kids who also went on to university, and I'm a teacher and a school leader. Gap years originated back in the UK in the 1970s and became common in the United States in the 1980s. They're, of course, a break between school and further education. There's some really good reasons for a gap year. You can visit the University of Life and take time out of academia. You learn new language skills, earn some money. Always try to make it worthwhile and add something to your resume or CV. For those of you going on to university, congratulations. Some great universities and really interesting destinations. You'll be flying the nest and developing even more independence. It's the most exciting time of your life. You'll get new friends and have new challenges and new opportunities. I want to offer some advice as a parent, a teacher, and an ex-university student myself. Learn the following things. Learn how to budget, to work the laundry, learn how to cook, stay or become organized. Remember that university is not school. Also, do not be too proud or stubborn to ask for help and advice. Remember, do not procrastinate because this can bring unnecessary stress. The balance between exercise, your social life and academics is vitally important and understand the importance of sleep. Collaboration is something that you've become used to here at GIS and please continue that journey in further education and into your career. 
And there you have it. I hope you have something useful. This is your day, but remember, this is not the end. It is also the beginning. 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the ones that you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sail, explore, dream, and discover, in the words of Mark Twain. Thank you for listening. Good evening.